Um, Jesus, you gave me such a fright. You've missed all the fun and games. The booze is all finished. They drank me dry. Can I make you a cup of tea? Shall I put the kettle on? To take sugar? I'm so cold. So cold. A nice cup of tea will warm you up. Oh, I've got some biscuits. There's some biscuits in the biscuit tin. I always keep some in. I don't like to get caught short. So I always keep a biscuit in. Don't like to be without a biscuit. I'm so cold. I'm so cold. My hands. Pain in my hands. Blackness. Only blackness. There's no hope. I can't get out. I, I can't get out. Somebody help me. What have I done to deserve this? Why am I in this place? Oh, it's so cold. Oh, it's so cold. Oh, help me. Please help me. I can't see. I've gone blind. <laughs> it's only blackness I can see. I can't find my way out. Oh, it's so cold. I, 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 I stumble. I, I feel my way along the walls. They're cold and damp and creatures run over my hands. It is so cold. Blackness. That's all I can see. All I can see is just blackness. Is this? No, no. What, what's the matter? Oh. You've gone and fallen down. No. What's the matter with your hands? Oh, which will fix them? Um... Would you like a nice cup of tea now, after your fall? Oh, would you like a sandwich? I think there's some left over from last night. Oh, I'm about second thoughts, they might be a bit curly by now. I'll make you a fresh one. A nice fresh sandwich. I've got cheese, or ham. Uh, um... Or I've got a bit of curry left over from last night. Very popular it was. I made it myself from my own recipe. <laughs> so it wasn't his kettle of fish, of course. Fish and chips is what he likes. And a pickled gherkin, of course. He thinks you can catch a cold from a curry. The rest of the boys like my curry. Compliments about my curry, there was. All giving me compliments. As I passed among them, they gave me compliments about my curry. <laughs> Um, I've got other food. The judge asked the crowd who they wanted to set free. And then, then the lawyers persuaded the crowd to set Barabbas free. They shouted, free Barabbas, free Barabbas, free Barabbas. I felt so helpless. The guards, they, they held me tightly by the arms. And the judge ordered the guards to set Barabbas free. <laughs> I saw the grin on his face. I saw him move away through the crowd. And the crowd, the crowd was cheering. I've got to get on. I've got to clean up this mess. We've had a bit of a party. I don't drink normally, but under the circumstances. Barabbas was so happy. Oh, you should have seen his face. 
Oh, he couldn't stop smiling. He was full of it. We had a sing song, all the old favourites. Down at the old bull ambush. <laughs> Roll out the barrel. <laughs> On Mother Kelly's doorstep. It was unexpected, him getting off like that. I thought he'd had it. I thought he was a goner. I'd made up my mind that I wasn't going to see him again. I packed away all his closing boxes. I even removed his pillow from his side of the bed so as not to remind me. I'd put myself in the frame of mind that I was going to be on my own. So you can imagine when he walked in through that door, I thought I'd seen a ghost. He didn't say anything to stop. We've just stood there with his hands in his pockets. And then he started to grin from ear to ear and punch the air with his fists. <laughs> I came over all faint. I had to have a drop of sherry. So he went straight on the mobile. He invited them all round. All his old cronies, their wives, their girlfriends, their children. Half of them I didn't even know. The place was thick with people patting him on the back, laughing and joking. Children running round with balloons. Oh, and the food. Oh, you should have seen the food. Oh, I gave him a good spread. They stripped me and they spat on me. And then they crucified me. They came for him early one morning. I wondered who it was. Got out of my bed, came downstairs and they all rushed in. I could hardly get my breath. They were saying he murdered someone. Of course, he goes away on long trips. I sometimes don't see him for weeks at a time. He says he's going fishing. That's what he calls it. His trips. His business trips. Going fishing. Well, I don't interfere. I'd look after the house, do my housework, and then he'd return. But this time, they were taking him away. I laid on my bed that night. Didn't bother to get undressed. Just laid there looking at the clock. Remember in the old days, before we met those people, when life was different, sunnier. We go down to South End. We'd have fish and chips. We couldn't go to the seaside without having fish and chips and a gherkin. He said it was traditional. They gave me vinegar to drink. After the party was over, it all went quiet. We sat here in this room with him grinning. I was in heaven. The party had gone so well. I I'd spent most of the day in the kitchen, but I like to spend time in the kitchen. He was out here on his mobile. I could hear him laughing and talking. And then he told me. The silence was broken. He broke the silence. That contented, reflective silence I was feeling. He broke the silence to tell me. To tell me he was leaving. I, I didn't know what to say. I just came over funny, you know. And he just sat there. All the room went dark. Like a tomb. Oh, oh. All I could see was his grin shining through the darkness. He said he'd found someone younger, Tina, from the Ferrer, pronounced Ferriar estate. He said he was going to move in with her. He'd been writing to her, sending her love letters, and she'd been writing to him, sending him topless pictures of herself. He said he'd taken the picture of me down and put a picture of her up on his cell wall. He said he couldn't control himself. It was love at first sight. After he got banged up for the night, he said he lay there and watched her, that she saved him from cracking up. I wondered why all his letters had stopped. He says I'd be taken care of, 
But I won't go short for anything. He wants me to meet her. Tina, that is. He wants me to go for tea one afternoon. To tea at Tina's flat on the Ferriar estate. I think it's the tits that have done it. He always was a tit man. He just wants a pair of young tits to sit opposite him at the breakfast table. He says he's going on some photographic assignments with Tina. With Tina clad in leather. Leather thigh length boots. He says he's going to be our manager. <laughs> I can't compete with that. I mean, I'll get my shoes from Marks and Spencer's. And I'm allergic to leather anyway. My God. My God. Why have you forsaken me?